Okay. Yep, let's do this. All right, first up, what do you got? Um, this is some um, um, semi-flexible filament. This is cheetah filament, as in like the... Uh, the it won't cheat me. No, no, no. It'll no. cheat you. No, no, not like that. It's from like the, uh, like the, like the big cat. So this is a, this is from Ninja Tech Cheetah. So this is, this is Fenner. Yeah, this is the same people who make the Ninja Flex, but it's a new type of filament, and yeah, it's huh? a different kind of material. Yeah, I'll just show it off. It's, it's flexible, and um, it's three millimeters, so it's um, not for many printers, but it does work very well with the Ultimaker. So this is kind of what it's designed for. So if you have an Ultimaker, you will probably dig this filament. So it's from Fenner Drives. So they're very good at making flexible filaments. Um, so they have like Ninja Flex and Semi Flex and now Cheetah. Okay. So cat it out. We got white, snow, yeah. and black. Which All right. Like charcoal or something. I don't know. And this is neat. You were playing with this before the show. This is from Hobby Creek. Yeah, this is kind of cute. We have a bunch of their uh, helping hands, and this is a little mini helping hand. Um, you know, these use uh, coolant hoses, and they have heat shrink on the alligator clips, so they're very good for holding components. Like here, it's holding a. Um, inductive charger. Uh, it's got this really nice rubbery stuff on the bottom. Um, I can show it off on the overhead. It's pretty straightforward, not, not too complicated. So yeah, you've got this base and the base has, uh, it's 3D printed, but then it has these like really good rubber grips. Like they're like super grippy. Yeah. And then it has these two arms that are very long, but you can pose them quite well. So if you need to pose them and then it sits nicely flat and then there's some more connections they have some accessories like lights and and uh, fans and stuff that you can attach in through these threaded pieces and it's an anodized aluminum block so really good stuff i really like the um the other ones we have one that's like a mega one and then we have one that um, attaches to a um a panavice so this is a a standalone one but it's a okay. mini pocket it doesn't take up much space on your desk either all right and Very continuing small. on for the products that we were going to have on here next week, a little board, the Pi this Girl This is board. the yeah, this is the Pi Girl um, Pi Girl Zero button pad. So if you're making a Pi Girl Zero, uh, you only need two of these. We have a kit pack, but maybe you already have the Pi Zero or you already have the TFT. So you can just buy the PCB. And this was, was one for left, one for right. Yeah, that's the PCB designed by No and Pedro. Nice work. That's right. And then um, this was. Um, <clears throat> A product that we talked about on a desk of Lady Ada, and then we contacted them, and it was really neat. They um, said, "Yeah, we'd like to Yay. have you stock this." So I think this is like one of the best, like Internet of Things relay safe way to do something that a lot of makers want to do. It's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. This is an IoT relay. It's what's called. It doesn't actually have any wireless capabilities inside of it. It is. It has a two connections. Um, which are uh, logic level. You can connect from three up to 40 volts DC or AC to signal when you want to turn on the relay. There's a single extremely large relay in the center. Um, I did a video where I tear it down so you can see inside of it. It's a really well-designed relay. And um, rather than having only one outlet, it has four. And two of them are normally on and two of them are normally off. And so when you switch, it changes which one is which. So that's kind of handy if you want to control multiple lights. So you don't have to plug an outlet, uh, a, um, uh, um, what's it called? A six to one uh, power strip yeah. or something. You have four connections. I remember not each one. It's not that each one is con is controlled individually. They're all controlled together yeah. by one relay. But you have multiple outlets. There's also a general power switch for turning on and off. And there's an LED to let you know it's working. It's just a really nice rugged um, relay yeah. board. It's, it's made it's in the what US. You want. It's yeah. it's really it's nice. I still suggest if you want to, if you need something very slim, the power switch tail works quite well. Um, but this is much more um, hardcore and intense, a little bit more expensive and a little bit more bulky, but maybe that is Yeah, good it's for worth it. I, you know, a lot of people want to do relay stuff. It's not, it's, this is worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Control it from anything you like. Yeah. And um, you don't want to be messing around. Like, yeah, it's very nicely isolated, it's got a nice plastic case. Yeah. Um, Check out the company, they make a couple other things, but this is definitely a winner. Like I saw yeah. this and I was like, yeah, they did a really good job. Okay, and then uh, I got a unicorn. Yay, this one I have a little demo for because it lights up. Yeah, and we have a little video too. I'm gonna show oh, the yeah? video first. Okay. Yes. This is a unicorn fat, so this is a Pico hat. It's not truly a hat because it doesn't have the E-prom on it, and uh, but you can plug it into any 
um, Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have to plug into a zero. It is Pi zero size, but of course it'll work with a Pi A plus or a B plus or a Pi two or a Pi three. And it adds um, a 32 NeoPixels, little mini NeoPixels even, onto uh, your, um, your um, Raspberry Pi using the pin 18. Yeah, your Pi zero. Yeah, your Pi Zero or whatever. It, it lets you add a colorful display. Uh, you use the PWM DMA output to do the NeoPixel yeah. timing, but there's a Python library that does it for you. Okay, and then last week. Oh, do you want to show the neighborhood really fast? Oh yeah, let's, yeah. Well, there's a bird. But, uh, I know, but we'll, this is yeah, almost there you finished. Go. So, yeah, yeah, I know. So very colorful, and this is just plugged into a Pi Zero, but again, you can um, plug it into any Raspberry Pi, and it has so many colors. So many colors. Okay. Let's I like that you did the live demo. You know what I don't like? I don't like um, any, or let me rephrase this. because You I don't like any? You no, like no, it. I should be positive. You know what I really like? I really like it when companies show videos of things in, that act like LED stuff. Like mm -hmm. What does a, it look like? Take a photo of it on and do a video of it, of it working. Yeah. Um, Challenging. Because I was going to say what I don't like is when they don't do that. But I should just frame it positively and say, yes. and say that's what I do like. Okay. And you know what's funny is um, Amazon recently, they, they well, maybe not even recently, they added a, you know, where you can upload a customer video. And YouTube is now adding, um, a, or is it Facebook? One of them's adding, you can reply to something with a video comment. And I think that's going to be really cool for oh, products. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Anyways. Yeah. The future okay. is video. I've been saying it for way too long. Okay. Okay, back to your feathers. Yeah, so this is a bird, and there's birds, and we have this bir boards of a feather flock together, and then uh, this isn't a real bird. We didn't, and those aren't real eggs. <laughs> just <laughs> FYI. Models, yeah. And we uh, didn't like go and grab a bird. No, but we have. Um, it, they look very similar, but um, here they are. Okay, this is uh, we have two feathers, uh, but they're birds of a feather. These are the Feather M0 LoRa radio feathers. These have been uh, asked for, and uh, they were in design. We, we just had to get around to getting all the parts to make them. They combine an AtSamD21 G18, which is an Arduino Zero compatible microcontroller. It's a Cortex M0, 48 megahertz, 256K of uh, flash, 32K of RAM, 48 megahertz, you know, tons of DMA, DAC, ADC. It's a very powerful chip that also has great Arduino support. And um, this feather, which is part of our feather line, it adds not only that chip with uh, battery control so you can use it off of a LiPo with recharging, USB port and the feather standard pinout, but also has an RFM 9X module, which has LoRa capability. So if you want to add uh, radio to your project where it's very far apart, you can get up to 20 kilometers of distance with LoRa radio and only 20 dBm of output. So not a lot of power, but extremely uh, far distances that you can go to um, send and receive data. Um, it, we have them in 433 megahertz, which is best for either people who are amateur radio and can use the 433 megahertz frequencies in the US, or for ITU2, sorry, ITU1 zone, which is in Europe, um, there's a license-free part of the spectrum you can use. And then um, we have a 900 megahertz version that you can use in ITU2 or ITU3, which is uh, America and uh, Asia. You can t tune it to 915 megahertz or 868 for license-free usage. So it's a great way to add um, wireless communication. And then there's Ar an Arduino library that works really well. So yeah. you can send and receive data like almost immediately. That's and you fun. can even do error correction with it. And it does retransmits. And it tells you the RSSI. And it's just awesome. Basically, you can do, basically do all the uh, wireless stuff that you want to do with your setup. And you don't have to do almost any effort. It's yeah. kind of all ready to go. That's cool. OK. And with that, Lady Ada, you know what that was? That was new products. That was new products. Yay. Okay.